Hey guys, my name is Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing with you what has turned out to be the longest furniture flip I have ever done, but I'm so happy with the result in the end and I think you guys are really gonna love this furniture transformation. So let me show you everything I did to give this piece of furniture a new life. transforming today it is an antique wardrobe solid wood and as you can see I've already done a little bit of prep work on the top so it had some really cracked up veneer that I've already removed painstakingly and then my husband did a really hard sand on the top of it just to get all the little veneer pieces off unfortunately it sustained some damage from me um, trying to pull that veneer off so I can't use the raw wood as it is but I'm gonna go ahead and patch all those holes and then sand it one more time so that it'll be ready to paint uh, as for the body of it, I will be painting it a creamy uh, chalk paint color from Dixie Belle. I'm not sure exactly how off-white I want to go, but I know I don't want it to be stark white. And one of my favorite features of this piece is that there are some drawers within these doors on the front. Um, and so inside there, I'm going to be doing uh, some accent colors just to give it a little bit more character. As you can see though, it is rough. It has a lot of damage. It has just some water stains. Uh, so I am definitely a little in over my head with how much repair work I have to do on this piece. That is definitely not my favorite part of furniture flipping. I much prefer a piece that's kind of ready to be painted as is. So you can see some damage there on the drawer corners and then um, just kind of throughout the detailing of the doors. So like I said, I'm going to have to get a little creative with how I repair everything. Here's the paint colors. I ended up choosing at first and then I did end up adding a more creamy yellow white which is called uh, Sun Kissed from Dixie Belle. So I primed it with the drop cloth, then did a coat of the Endless Shore Silk Paint, which has the primer and top coat built in. And then I ended up adding the Sun Kissed on top because I was just not liking how white it was looking. I wanted it to be a little bit more antique -y white. And so the Sun Kissed color really helped me accomplish that. And here is how it is looking just with that first coat of drop cloth. Actually, I think this is two coats, so it's looking pretty rough. And anytime I paint something white, I'm instantly filled with regret because it looks so terrible. But this is just coat number one. Okay, I'm checking in for a little progress update here. So I have the top ready to be painted. I just filled it with some wood putty and hand sanded it and then sanded it with my orbital sander. So it's so perfectly nice and smooth now and ready to be painted. Obviously it's not a finished paint job yet, but it's a very, very good base for me to start working on adding a few embellishments to kind of hide the broken off pieces here in this detail work. I'm gonna work on applying some of those now. And then after I have all of those done, then I'll do the final coat of paint. So I'm gonna be using Iron Orchid Designs Air Dry Clay. And then I'm using the brand new IOD mold called Primitive. And it's kind of folk arty. Has a mixture of florals and leaves. And then I like that this little like detail here, which will be easier to see once I take it out of the plastic. Um, and I'm gonna use this for all of the embellishment on this piece. Now a few quick tips, especially if you are a beginner, you're gonna wanna put your piece of furniture or whatever you're working on, uh, make that a flat surface. So I have mine laying on its back because you don't wanna mess with your appliques sliding down because the glue is taking a while to dry. So definitely wanna have everything on a flat surface so you're not messing with a sliding issue. Um, and then also I'm using baking soda in the mold, especially on a mold like this with a lot of little tiny intricate details. You're going to want to use that baking soda so that the fresh clay doesn't stick in there and it's easier to remove. Because I'm using a pack of fresh clay, it is more wet than some of my other packs. I did use that on purpose though because I was just a little worried about the durability of these clay appliques on something like a piece of furniture. So I wanted to use some fresh clay and just cover my bases, make sure that it's not gonna crack. I find that I have more cracking with older clay. Um, and then another tip is that you want to glue this down when it's not fully dry, but not super wet. Cause the more you handle it, the more you risk kind of losing those really intricate details of the mold itself. So you really don't want to be handling it too much, especially when it's fresh out of the mold. So I like to lay it down in the spot that I want it to be. It gives you a little bit of time also to kind of rearrange them and find the design that you like. And then once you have everything in place, let it set for like an hour or so 
just to kind of harden up a little bit, but you don't want it to fully dry because that actually increases the risk of it pulling away from the piece of furniture and not drying perfectly flat. So all that to say, there's a few tricks to using the, the clay properly. And I've learned this just after a few trial and error here. So I definitely recommend gluing it down when it's still a little pliable, but not completely wet. You don't want to mess up those really beautiful details that IOD is so well known for. And this mold today is no exception to that. The details of this are beautiful. You can see the intricate lines of each petal. I mean, it's really actually quite amazing. And I love the way that these turned out. Okay, everything's been drying now for about 18 hours and I just really wanted to make sure how the glue is going to hold up and I can tell you that these things are on here so solid they are not budging um, the plaster or the clay is holding up really well now as I'm standing here looking at everything that I did last night I'm liking it so far but I need to do so much more of these little clay pieces I think to make a real impact I, I do know that like painting them out will help them blend in but right now they're just too random i want to make them look more intentional so i'm definitely going to be adding more around the frames on both sides and then i do still want to add a couple on the bottom just to kind of balance everything out i might even try to do a couple like really little cute ones here just to cover up the broken spots so a lot more work to do but this process is at least super fun uh, it's just time consuming so it's going to take me a while but i think it's going to be worth it so let's just keep going Okay, I feel like I'm officially at a good stopping point. I have all my little clay pieces glued. They've all been glued for well over 24 hours. Most of them have been actually two or three days. So they're nice and solid with that Gorilla Glue. I'm really happy with how that worked. You can see I added a little flower there under the keyhole. There's like a little repair there, a little repair there. Um, and then down here I added just like these little leaves, look almost more like feathers and a flower and then I just filled in this little gap with another little stem there and then similar on this side just a little stem and then here's everything I added on the doors I think it looks super pretty but I am excited to see how they look when it's all painted the same color because right now they're standing out a little more than I want to them to so now I'm just gonna go ahead with my first coat of paint All right, moving on to another quick update. I cannot film every step of this process because this furniture, it has been taking me ages to get this piece done and filming it just adds to the time. So I'm just gonna pop in and do these updates for you. I think it's looking really pretty. It's just been so time consuming. I did do a gel stain on top, it's still drying so it looks a little darker there. I think that's gonna lighten up, I hope. Um, just to give it a faux wood effect because I wasn't able to salvage the top if you remember I had too many like gouges and scratches in it but this actually looks pretty realistic to me as far as a wood top and I think it needed like a little something extra anyway so I think I'm liking that that's also gonna be much more durable on top than paint would be um, I have my drawers all repaired except for oh that corner right there still man it is never ending but I'm going to paint each one, each drawer front a different color and like an ombre effect. I am expecting that I'll be able to charge pretty good money for this piece. I've been working on this, like I'm, I'm going on a few weeks now, honestly, of it being in my garage, just in progress. So I'm glad that I'm getting a little closer right now to at least those finishing details. I've decided just to add a little bit of character instead of using the brown wax, because I literally can't find it anywhere. I've created my own kind of watercolor paint and I'm using the accent color that I used inside the doors. So it's just a little 
a bit darker than my white color you're seeing here. And all I'm gonna be doing is just kind of watercoloring almost like a shadow inside of these door details. I feel like it's just adding the perfect amount of age to the look without being overpowering. So I'm just doing it on here really lightly like this. And then all I do is take just a paper towel with my finger and then just try to like smooth out that line on the edges. So just like that, just kind of feathering that color out so there's not such a harsh line. And I think especially if you're not wanting to invest money in a wax, this is a really good alternative. And because it's so watery and light, like there's a lot of play here you have. Um, if you do go awry and use too much paint, you can always just get back out your other paint color and paint over it and then start over. Or just erase it completely if it's just not something you're liking. It's just adding the perfect amount of depth to the piece because I was feeling like the solid color was just a little flat for me. So I'm even going through now and you can see here that I'm adding it to um, other details of the piece and that's just really kind of helping give the whole piece some dimension. So I, like I said, not even sure that people are gonna notice that I did this because the color difference is so subtle, but I am just gonna try to go around and accentuate some of the details with this color. Definitely gives it more of a vintage vibe as it has a little bit more distressing without actually distressing it. I am going back and forth in my mind about distressing it. I think I wanna run this some sandpaper just along the edges here. Okay, I feel like we're really getting somewhere, finally. Like the finish line, it's so close. All I need to do is do a second coat of my accent color on the inside of these doors. There's a little bit of just like trim work that needs painted. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead now and do the stamping on the front of the drawers because I cannot keep you guys hostage much longer watching me paint this piece of furniture. It is taking forever. So I'm so close. I'm gonna show you guys this last stage of just kind of this fun addition here of using the stamps. I'm gonna be using some white ink and I think that's gonna tie the whole piece together. And I think I'm gonna be done then. I'm gonna be using these newly released Pennsylvania Folk Iron Orchid Design stamps. They are very complimentary of the molds that I use. They're similar folk art style. And then I have a brand new little ink pad from IOD. And I'm gonna try their white for the first time. I think it's, it says mixing white on there, which makes me wonder if it's actually for mixing with the other colors. But I'm gonna go ahead and just try it as is. What I'm concerned about being the problem is that this is a bright white, so I don't know if that's gonna bother me compared to uh, when it's like right next to the off-white of the rest of the piece of furniture. But I'll go ahead and do it in bright white first and then see if I need to go change my color from there. Now I know I keep saying that I'm on the final step, but I swear I'm so close to being done now. I'm using this Voodoo gel stain called Tobacco Road from Dixie Belle. It's the same color gel stain that I used on the top of the piece, but I decided to also use it on the legs of the piece. I love that look of a painted piece of furniture where the legs are still wooden. Of course, I couldn't do that with this piece because there had been so much damage. So all I'm doing is after I have painted my base coat of the white, which is really important, you wanna do that first, then I'm going over it with the gel stain and I'm doing it really liberally because I want it to get down into all of the cracks of the details. And then very simply, I'm just gonna take a paper towel and basically scrub off the majority of the gel stain from the top surface, leaving that dark color down in the cracks. 
and it's really giving it just a really beautiful antiqued look. Uh, it looks a little bit like wood. Of course, it's not perfectly the same as if it was real wood, but it does look really good. And I feel like it's the perfect addition to kind of tie the whole piece together from the top to the bottom. And then finally, I'm giving the hardware a really good clean. It was so dirty and also just really dingy looking. I wanted to bring out some of the shine of the metal. So first I do a scrub with vinegar and baking soda. And then once that's kind of settled for a while and I scrubbed them pretty clean, I then just washed them with regular dish soap. And they came out still vintagey, a little distressed, but also had some of their shine back. Plus they were a lot cleaner to touch. And here we are up at my booth, Green Onion Vintage, for our final looks. This thing was a beast to get in this booth, but wow, I love how it turned out. I have not done the molds on a piece of furniture before, so I'm super happy with that look. Here it is from the side. The lighting's not super great in this booth, so I apologize for that. Um, here's how the handles ended up cleaning up, though. Definitely got some of their shine back to them. Not to mention they're just much cleaner in general. And then honestly, I think one of my favorite touches was making the feet look wooden again. I wanted to do that initially, but they were so beat up, I wasn't sure how to make it happen. So this kind of faux wood effect with the gel stain really worked out and it helped pull together the fact that the top is gel stained also. So I love that. Some things that I did off camera was fix that hinge. And I also oiled the sides of all the drawers and all the runners so that everything pulls out nice and smooth. Here's my faux wood finish on the top. But it's really just all these details that took such a long time. But I feel like we're really worth it now that I see everything pulled together. going inside here I wish I could see everybody who opens this especially tomorrow because we have a big tent sale this weekend so it's actually the perfect time for me to get this piece in here because it's gonna get a lot of extra eyes than it normally would on a regular shopping weekend so our tent sale normally brings in a lot of new customers and I just wish I was here to see everyone's reaction to seeing this for the first time, especially when you open the doors and you get to see the added touch of the blue with all the florals. It really looks like wallpaper, which is what I was going for. I like that it's not a perfect repeating pattern. I like that it's darker to light. Obviously that wasn't a completely necessary touch, but I just tried to add as much character as I could. I'm a huge fan of these new IOD stamps. And don't forget that you can order IOD directly from my treasure house and I'll have all their information down below. Uh, Cindy is the shop owner here and she will ship anywhere in the United States. But this is it and I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I apologize it's taken me so long to get it out but I think you probably understand that this one was a pretty time consuming project. Hopefully have some smaller things coming up soon. And I have a pretty big announcement coming up in the next few weeks. So make sure that you're subscribed if you'd like to be one of the first people to hear that news. I appreciate you spending some time with me today. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.